The scripture this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Mark chapter 13, beginning with verse 1. Hear the word of God. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, Jesus replied? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign? that these are about to be fulfilled. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Our Lord, our God. We come before you to hear your word, and we pray that our hearts and our minds will be open to what you are calling us to. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y2K, 9-11, tsunamis in Indonesia and Japan, the Haiti earthquake, Katrina, Superstorm Sandy, war on terror, End times, baby, end times. That's what it feels like sometimes. We are living in the end times. At least, that is what we could be led to believe. Looking at our sufferings of our world, wars on terror, famine, persecution, natural disasters, changing weather, threat, of nuclear annihilation, disease, pestilence. I'm telling you, turn or burn. That is what is happening. And our popular culture has confirmed my findings. Consider Hollywood's obsession with the apocalypse, Mad Max, Waterworld, 2012, I Am Legend, even Disney's WALL-E, The Book of Eli, the Hunger Games. Did you know that National Geographic Channel has a show called Doomsday Preppers? <laughs> Seriously, it's a show about families and how they're preparing for doomsday. These movies and TV shows give voice to our culture's anxiety about the fallout of environmental biological, social, or technological meltdown. These epic events in our history and in our present give rise to our anxiety and the worry about the future. For perhaps a variety of reasons, the disciples in this morning's discourse wanted to know when this terrible destruction would happen. But can you imagine the additional anxiety and chaos created if you knew the very moment the world as we know it would come to an end? Just waiting for that moment. Time ticking by. Jesus never answers the when question. Not in these verses, nor in the verses to follow. In fact, he reiterates that no one 
not even he himself, the Christ, not even he, the Son of God, knows when the culmination of God's work will be revealed. Jesus instead refocuses the group towards what will be helpful to them as disciples and later leaders of the church. Initially, it is the impending destruction of the temple that has the disciples in a dither. The Jerusalem temple was an impressive structure. The sheer size of the temple created the illusion of permanence. Archaeologists have discovered one temple stone in Jerusalem that is 42 feet long, 11 feet tall, 14 feet deep, and weighs over 1 million pounds. The temple to the disciples looked as permanent as earth itself, yet just a few decades later, it was torn down stone by stone, leaving only a heap of rubble that remains to this day. What looked secure was in fact on the verge of total collapse. It rather sounds like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. <laughs> Until the morning of September 11th, 2001, it was inconceivable that the Twin Towers could be reduced to a pile of ash and debris that trapped the lives of so many. And that is what Jesus is trying to convey to his disciples, that no matter how secure life seems now, nothing is permanent except our life with God. We try to build security for ourselves in this life through medical insurance, investment plans, and life insurance policies. We plan our weekly schedules on our Google calendars, and it creates an illusion of security. But it's a fragile illusion, and it doesn't take much to shatter it in front of our eyes. Jesus uses the example of the destruction of the temple to tell his disciples it is not about what human ingenuity can do or has done, as these things can be undone. The temple represented the center of strength and of comfort to the Jewish community, but at the end of the day, it was no more than just a man-made construct. Jesus wants the disciples to know that even without the temple, the worship of God will continue. It must continue. Without the temple, the good works of the kingdom must prevail. And that we cannot hide from our faith behind the walls, the very walls that symbolize that faith. The disciples are so impressed with the temple as if to say, this is the pinnacle of our work for God. One of the disciples says to him, look, teacher, the massive stones. What a magnificent building. And yet, these walls for some represent the barriers that kept people out. Every society creates walls, walls for safety, walls that hem us in or keep us out. And the temple had a way of keeping God separated from the very people who needed him most. In our collective anxiety about the future, we might be tempted to wall ourselves in away from the world in this place, behind these cinder block walls and these massive beams. Even when we are afraid, though, or unsure, 
We cannot wall ourselves in away from the world. We have to be out there in life, not hiding from life. We have to be aware that life will happen, all aspects of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes the reality of life hurts. We lose loved ones. We argue with a friend. We say words to one another that we shouldn't. We strike out physically or emotionally at loved ones. We hurt because of physical frailties. We suffer from emotional scars and pain. That, my friends, is what life is. Life is the good and the bad. Life is the hurts and the joys. You have to have one with the other. There are a lot of things in today's world that makes us want to put up walls and hide. There's violence and war and poverty, hunger, disease, natural disasters, unnatural disasters, hate and fear. It hurts to see the world like this, but Jesus tells us that these are birth pains. Jesus calls the false messiahs, the wars, the earthquakes, and the famines birth pains. Not even signs of the end times, just the pains going through. In other words, these are things that simply are characteristic of the times we are living in, because Christ is fir has first come and will return. And although it may get worse as we draw near to the second coming, like contractions in childbearing, the existence of these things are simply part of the age that we live in. Instead of the temple's fall being the end of an age, it was only the end of a chapter. I believe that it was Jesus' intention to focus his disciples on what really matters. Take heed that no one leads you astray. What matters isn't the temple or some crisis, either small or big. What's truly important is that the gospel must be shared in all times and in all places. If you're attending to that, all the rest will take care of itself. We are called to live always anticipating the activity of God. We are called to live now, allowing the promises of God about the future to infuse our every present moment. Because when you live looking for the activity of God here and now, you begin to see it. In an act of kindness of a friend, in an opportunity to help another, in the outreach ministry of our congregation, in the chance to listen deeply to the hurt of another, God shows up in all kinds of places working with us, for us, through us, in us. You just have to look. When will this happen? Now. What will be the sign? When you see people acting as Jesus did, even here, even now. The temple might be destroyed, but our hope is not. Our economy might be in shambles, but the stewardship of our gifts is not. Our homes might be leveled by wind and flood and fire and earthquake, but our faith is not shaken and our foundation is sure. Wars surround us and have claimed the lives of the innocent, but the peace of Christ is always present. Physical pain and death cannot be avoided, and yet the glory 
of our heavenly home awaits. Famine and poverty and suffering invade our world every day. But serving those in need exposes a joy of a life well lived. End times, baby, end times. That is when we are living. But instead of turn or burn, let's turn and burn into a bright future with our God leading the way as we live as Christ has called us to, breaking down the walls that divide, making a difference in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods. That is the end. Amen.